Welcome to Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan, and we are broadcasting live on June 18th from the studios of WMNF in Tampa. Later in the show, we're going to talk about the proposed redevelopment of the area around Tropicana Field. A few days ago, the St. Petersburg City Council held its first vote on the project and a possible new stadium for the Tampa Bay Rays. We'll hear all about that in a bit. But first, June is LGBTQ Pride Month and St. Pete Pride celebration celebrations continue through this weekend. There's a lot of news in Florida that impacts the LGBTQ community and its allies. Our first guest is Equality Florida's Director of Transgender Equality, Angelique Godwin. Welcome to Tuesday Cafe, Angelique. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. I'm glad you could join us. Thanks very much. So we'll talk about Pride Month and the state of LGBTQ affairs in Florida in just a moment, but let's begin with what is Equality Florida? Equality Florida is a nonprofit organization that seeks to bring equality across the board. While we focus our rights um, in the LGBTQ plus community, we also fight for everyone's right to equal rights uh, effectively. That's our major standpoint, and that's what we, we look to do on a daily, day-to-day -day basis. And I think you're in a relatively new position with them, Director of Transgender Equality. Why that position? Why was that created? And, and uh, why was that cre position created, I should say? Uh, the position had already existed. There has been previous um, people who have held the position. I have been working with Equality Florida for a little over two years now. I started off as a volunteer and then I signed on to help with some as their special events coordinator for the transgender department through their transaction program. And um, I did really well at my job. And so they they asked me to, to, step, to step in in the previous leader, Nicole Parker's absence and I gladly accepted the position. So we'll we'll get to policy, especially LGBTQ policy in Florida in just a moment, but right now let's talk about Pride Month. One of the largest Pride celebrations in the South continues through this weekend. What can you tell us uh, about St. Pete Pride? Uh, St. Pete Pride is something that's near and dear to my heart. As a Florida resident of 10 years, I've had the pleasure of attending, participating, and being a part of St. Pete Pride for the past few years specifically. Last year, I actually hosted their major Friday night event. It's one of the, the largest ones in the state, if not in the world, if I'm not mistaken, over 200,000 attendees yearly. And it is the, the biggest showing I can think of of love and acceptance here in Florida specifically. And I should tell our audience that this hour, the St. Pete's police chief and the Pride executive director are going to be discussing security for the Pride Parade and that St. Pete Fire Rescue is going to be talking to people about preparing for the heat this weekend. So just people can be aware of those things that are happening. I wanna remind our audience that our guest is Equality Florida's Director of Transgender Equality, Angelique Godwin. And we're speaking about LGBTQ issues in Florida and Pride Month. I'm Sean Canan. This is Tuesday Cafe. We're broadcasting from the studios of WMNF in Tampa, Florida. Uh, so some some issues that we can talk about regarding LGBTQ issues that are happening in the state is Florida has a transgender candidate running for the state legislature. Ashley Brundage is running for the legislature. WMNF's The Skinny spoke with her on Friday, and you can hear that interview on WMNF.org. She's running for House District 65. That's where Representative Karen Gonzalez-Pittman is running for re-election so Angelique, what are your thoughts about there that there's a transgender Floridian who is running for the state legislature? I I couldn't be happier with Ashley as a candidate. She as a woman is built, built her entire career on empowering other women and she fights for for equality on a regular basis through her her um her personal business and so I know that she is a strong candidate. I know that she's going to do absolutely amazing. And I think I can't I can't wait to hear that. I think that it's time that we had somebody who represented the trans community in this light and in this way. And I think that she couldn't be a better representation for the community in itself. And there's so many issues in Florida with the Florida legislature and with court challenges to LGBTQ issues. I'm going to try to run through some of these and we'll get an update <laughs> from you and, and see where things stand. So last week, 
A judge re rejected a law that was restricting treatment for transgender Floridians. The 2023 Florida law and, and regulations uh, associated with it prohibit the use of puberty blockers and hormone therapy to treat children for gender dysphoria and make it harder for trans adults to access care. So your thoughts on that law and the recent rejection of that law by the judge? Yeah, so that would be the trans youth ban uh, law that went into effect last year. And um, I, I'm so thrilled to find that it's permanently injunctioned uh, so that it cannot move forward and it can't go forward and it's found to be unconstitutional by the judge who uh, who reviewed it. And I think that that's an amazing move forward for our community. I think this is an unprecedented time where Florida continues to be under attack from DeSantis and the the entire right wing party. And it's been an onslaught of just um, unnecessary things going on. So to have this happen, to have this momentous thing, just prove why we deserve to be here. And some of the, the things that the judge said were so wonderful and so so poignant. I, I implore everyone to go and, and look it up. It's It's absolutely wonderful what he did and what he said. And I think that where we're at now, this is gonna just help continue the momentum we have here in Florida. As a group, Equality Florida has been fighting, you know, this year alone, we helped to overturn 21 of 22 anti-LGBTQ bills. And we were able to, you know, change a lot from the previous year. The previous year, there were 17 laws that were passed. So with this momentum and having these things happen and people starting to realize that these laws are unconstitutional and they're not helping anybody and they're very harmful to people's livelihoods. It's so great to know that we're making the move forward in the right direction. And in addition to, as you pointed out, the judge saying that the law was unconstitutionally discriminatory, the judge also said that the law and the regulations were motivi mo motivated by animus towards transgender people. And he forbids state health officials from enforcing the law the law carried heavy sanctions and potential jail time for doctors who violated the restrictions. So uh, the a judge sitting on a bench or writing a brief is saying that the law was motivated by animus towards transgender Floridians. Yeah, um, I think like you hear something like that and you you think to yourself, that's that's how we feel on the inside as a, as a trans person. I, I felt uh, I sat in a lot of those rooms, me personally, right? I was there all last year and the year before. I listened to some of the things that were said by these individuals who have complete control over the the safety of our lives, right? They can't control our lives, but they control a huge portion of how we're treated in the world on a day-to-day -day basis. So to have this judge not only rule against them, but also put that in plain wording, like that's in print. And I love that. That's forever. You know, that's a document that's going to be recorded in every way possible. So that's awesome for us. Our guest is Equality Florida's Director of Transgender Equality, Angelique Goodwin. We're speaking about LGBTQ issues in Florida and about Pride Month. I'm Sean Canan, and this is Tuesday Cafe. We're broadcasting from the studios of WMNF. Another thing that we can talk about is that last week, the Biden administration asked a federal judge to reject Florida's attempt to block a new health care rule that seeks prevent, to prevent discrimination based on gender identity. In a brief, the U.S. Department of Justice attorneys argued that a U.S. district judge should deny a preliminary injunction that was sought by Florida and other plaintiffs in a lawsuit filed last month. That lawsuit stems from a federal rule that was issued in April, which affects programs like Medicaid and kid care. The rule is designed to help carry out a law that prevents discrimination in health care programs that receive federal money. And the law prevents discrimination based on sex. The rule that the Biden administration is is trying to enforce applies to that, include that discrimination based on gender identity. So Angelique, why is the Biden administration's rule that the applying to include discrimination based on gender identity, why is that important? That's important because right now Florida is, is facing an unprecedented attack on the definition of what gender means um, and the, the battle between that and definition by birth, uh, sex at birth. So really with this kind of hunkering down and, and putting our heels in the ground with the Biden administration, 
saying this, it's actually super helpful for us because it, it prevents them from changing the language or pushing the language that will cause harm and show animus or hurt um, towards the trans community. So this allows us a little bit of a um, release, you know, a little bit of a, a you know, I, I don't know how to explain it other than like a sigh of relief, right? We get to be a little bit more at ease knowing that we have the president's entire administration backing us as well. And speaking of rules put out by the Biden administration, last week, the Biden administration urged the U.S. district judge to reject efforts by Florida and by other states to block a new federal rule about sex-based discrimination in education programs. Florida, Alabama, Georgia, and South Carolina and four organizations filed a lawsuit in April to challenge a rule that prevents discrimination based on sexual orientation and gender identity. The plaintiffs are seeking a preliminary injunction against the rule, which is designed to help carry out Title IX. That's a landmark 1972 law that bars discrimination in education programs based on sex. So your thoughts, Angelique, about how the Biden administration is, is underlining the fact that it's uh, it would be discrimination in education programs based on sex if someone is being discriminated against because of their gender identity. Yeah, yeah. I mean, especially with um, our our resolving the lawsuit against the Don't Say Gay and Trans Law, you know, we have this awesome moment where we have certain rights and certain things restored within the classroom, right? So we have the free, free expression restored. We have anti-bullying protections strengthened. We have the gay straight alliances are protected. Classroom references are clarified, you know, non-discrimination assured, you know, anything targeting a person, a couple family issues, things like that under the guise of the law is explicitly forbidden now. So with that and having this hand in hand, this is once again, another example of how the, uh, the Biden administration and our president is looking at us and saying, you know, these things are not right. You can't just go in and discriminate against people based on how you feel. You know, just because you don't like something or you don't understand something doesn't mean that you have the right to cause harm. So this is another huge win for us, or at least a step in the right direction until we can get, you know, the state of Florida to stop attacking these communities or this community in particular. Well, one more attack that we can talk about is in January, Florida changed its policy by not letting people change the gender on their driver's licenses. The state suggested that transgender individuals who had the correct licenses are committing fraud. One critic called it an ongoing campaign to make Florida uninhabitable and unsafe for transgender individuals. So, Angelique, why are you concerned about Florida changing its policy to not let people use their correct gender, gender on their driver's licenses? I think that that's a, a, another battle that we talked about lately. We've, talk, we've touched base on the sex at birth versus gender identity. And just to be clear, this is a ruling by the DMV, although there is a lot of policy that's been trying to, to make its way through um, in the state of Florida that would change that verbiage. The DMV here in Florida has um, over <laughs> kind of jumped the gun, I would say, and they released a, a statement and then also backed that by removing the ability to change gender markers here in Florida. So that's just to clarify that. And so that's a concern for us because it prevents us and it allows discrimination on so many levels. Many people don't think about it, but your license, when you show it to people, it, it on a small level, we can talk about it on the basis of how it affects people on their day-to-day -day life, right? When you go to make a purchase at the grocery store, if you're shopping in a, in a retail store that's a high end, if you are um, you know, going into a nightclub or ordering a drink from a bar you know, or a restaurant even, right? Anytime you're ID, you put yourself out there in this position. If your gender marker doesn't match your physicality or what you, what you appear as, that can cause for someone to do discrimination. Talking about that on a deeper level, we talk about having going into a bank a bank could prevent you from getting your funds or your money. You could be denied a home or you could be denied a rental. You could be denied on an airplane for travel. You could be denied on so many levels simply because one of those things doesn't match your physical appearance. So what that does is that causes a lot of dismay for a lot of trans individuals. You know, if they are in transition, that's the whole point of it, right? We're in a process in which we're transitioning from one gender to another. Or even if we're in the non-binary community, we're in a position where we're living our lives to the best of our ability and we're trying to follow the rules of society. 
and they're they're moving the goalposts <laughs> effectively. So it's a huge concern. But you know, thankfully, having these backings and having so much going for us in this manner, especially 100% to what we've been talking about with the Biden administration. Um, it's super important that we have that support because without it, this could be devastating to the community. Our guest is Equality Florida's Director of Transgender Equality, Angelique Godwin. We're speaking about LGBTQ issues in Florida. I'm Sean Canan, and this is Tuesday Cafe. We're broadcasting from WMNF in Tampa. An appeals court in September will consider Florida's pronouns law. The 2023 Florida law restricted educators' use of personal pronouns and titles in schools, and the state took the case to the 11th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals after a chief U.S. district judge in April sided with a transgender teacher who challenged the law. Uh, so, Angelique, this this law and it's being challenged by it, it's being it was. Uh, kind of put on hold maybe by the judge in this one particular case at least and then but the but now Florida is challenging that decision. Yeah, so there was an injunction placed on that and it, uh, so that means that it, it'll be it's on hold. They can't make any further progress with it until September where they'll they'll view it fully. But this is a huge win for us once again just because it allows us to to breathe <laughs> it allows us to live and it allows us to move and act accordingly the way we've always done um with uh, you know in the case of teachers in school it's always in the best interest of the students it's always in the best interest of being transparent and helping them learn and learning is is such a big field right so we want them to have that that ability to to not only be themselves, but know that the people that they're learning from are a trusting space and are also in a safe space as well. And that transgender teacher who challenged the law, Katie Wood, is, uh, you can hear her in a WMNF interview on WMNF.org if people want to go and, and listen or watch that interview. So uh, we mentioned earlier Pride Month. It's Pride Month. And so at the beginning of this month, several Florida cities raised the gay pride, gay pride flag over city buildings but it was almost the case this year that it would have been become illegal in Florida until a bill died in the Florida legislature. Uh, we'll talk about that bill in just a second. Let me play a, a clip because right before Gulfport, which is in Southern Pinellas County, raised the pride flag this month, I asked Pinellas County Commissioner Charlie Justice, he used to be in the legislature, about that failed bill, and here's what he had to say. Well, I think there's two parts of it. One. Um, we, we don't need Tallahassee legislators trying to diminish uh, and negatively impact our LGBTQ community. That's that's first off. Secondly is I'm a strong believer in local control and cities and counties and, and local governments should have the ability to make some of those basic decisions for themselves without big government from Tallahassee interfering. Well, that's Pinellas County Commissioner Charlie Justice speaking in Gulfport as the city was raising its pride flag over the public library there. And the law that he's referring to it was would have this. Uh, sorry, it was a bill that was in the Florida legislature this year that died before it was passed, and uh, it would have forbid forbidden things like gay pride flags from being flown over city buildings. Your thoughts, Angelique, on that bill? Uh, I was actually in legislation for that bill quite a few times as it traveled throughout. Um, the process during session. And I will say that that bill had a lot more harm in it than people know. It, it didn't just seek to prevent flags from being flown, but you could not have any type of what they called paraphernalia or memorabilia is what we would know. So no cups, no, no, um, no stickers, no anything that would say that, especially in federal buildings. Um, so it would be a huge missive, but I'm so glad to hear what Charlie had to say about the flags and about supporting things and, and cities having the ability, the autonomy to make that decision on their own, the ability for them to choose to, to do that. And when you think about that and you think about how many cities are in Florida to know that the majority of them this month have done some kind of major pride, um, pride flag uh, raising event. They don't just raise the flag. They have full on events. Uh, you know, people get up at seven, eight in the morning and go out to these these pride flag raisings um, because they're in support of it. And to know that the county commissioners and to know that the city officials are fully behind it and supporting it 
just goes to show you that not everyone is in agreement with the laws that are being put in. And you alluded to this earlier, but in March, Florida settled the lawsuit over its don't say gay law. The settlement came after months of talks. It seeks to draw a distinction between preventing classroom instruction about gender identity and sexual orientation and other school contexts in which the subjects might come up. So remind people what Florida's don't say gay law was and what what was uh, kind of what came out of the settlement there. Yeah, so there was um, it's a it's a it's a piggyback uh, lawsuit. So the first half of it was the don't say gay bill, which which prevented teachers and students from speaking on gay subject matter or speaking about gay topics in general from kindergarten through eighth grade. It was extended and added. Um, the don't say trans portion of it was put from eight through 12 uh, as well. And so this uh, bill that is now finally <laughs> under the water, uh, it just was a, a super harmful bill that caused for a lot of discrimination within the school system. A lot of teachers lost their jobs. A lot of students um, were put in unsafe positions. So it just was very, very harmful. And so the settlement uh, basically with several state agencies and school boards successfully nullified the most harmful impact of the law, ensuring that it can't be wielded as a tool of discrimination against the LGBTQ plus community, um, the students, the educators, or their families, because they all were affected by both bills, the, the first part and part B. And it secured like several critical protections um, and clarifications as well. So they really made sure that it was um, descriptive. And I, I spoke about them, but yeah, but basically like free expression, students and teachers can now speak and write freely. Uh, the anti-bullying protection strengthened was just a settlement reinforced safeguards against bullying based on sexual orientation and gender identity. Sorry, excuse me. <clears throat> The Gay Straight Alliance Protection, which is my favorite as someone who used to go to high schools and colleges across the state and across the U.S. I love that this is now a protection where students can actually go back to having GSAs and they're essential and they're an advocacy space. So we love that. The classroom, classroom reference clarified is huge for teachers because they're allowed to speak on these subjects or now again and have these conversations and in basis to historical reference <laughs> and things that have actually happened, which I think is unique and funny because now this is now gonna be a topic that we're gonna talk about in the future in our schools because they made such a big stink about it. Now it's gonna be something that we have to teach going forward. And then also extracurricular activities are protected as well. So any um, LGBTQ plus clubs, cultural presentations, anything like that will remain unaffected thanks to this, um, this new ruling. And before I let you go, Angelique, uh, speaking of don't say gay, that was the law that the bill that started this whole feud between Ron DeSantis and Walt Disney World. But now those two are getting along again. The theme park is even once again making donations to homophobic Republican elected officials. What are your thoughts after after all this uh, this, this takeaway from the Disney versus DeSantis ordeal? Honestly. Uh, personally, aside from everything else, I think that it's just, it's it's always going to be this way in our society with the way that w the world works with capitalism being the way that it is. I think that bigger corporations and companies are always going to, to slide back and forth with politicians and politics. I think it's easy to sit here and say um, that these companies are, or these organizations are donating um, and, you know, for whatever reason, but we don't know what happened. We don't know what the deal was. We never will, right? They're never going to speak on it. Um, do I like it? Absolutely not. Do I think it's necessary? Absolutely not. Especially after everything that we endured as a, as a state and as a people here living in Florida as residents. But the reality is, is that we have to keep fighting for, for voting and fighting for people to be registered and fighting for people to make the change. Because if we remove those people from power, they're not going to be able to put that money there. They'll have to put it somewhere else. So, uh, you know, you can't, you know, shoot the messenger, right? We have to attack the problem at its head and really focus on on that, especially with this being an election year. I urge everyone to make sure that they're registered to vote. And I hope that they know about their candidates. I hope that they know who they're voting for, because this is the reality, right? If we don't know who we're voting for, we put people into power who who make decisions that will, um, you know, inevitably affect our livelihoods here in the state of Florida.
Well, I want to thank you very much for coming on WMNF's Tuesday Cafe, Angelique. Thank you so much for having me. This is absolutely wonderful. I'm, I'm really glad you could come on. Angelique Godwin is Equality Florida's Director of Transgender Equality, and we spoke about Pride Month and about LGBTQ rights in Florida. I'm Sean Canan, and this is Tuesday Cafe. We're broadcasting from the studios of WMNF in Tampa.